What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. Today, I'm gonna be preparing some tackle for an upcoming fishing trip on Table Rock Lake, Missouri. Now I wanna walk you through all the different setups I'm gonna be preparing, as well as all the baits and the modifications I use to catch fish in the late fall on a deep, clear reservoir. So let's get into it. Table Rock Lake is a highland reservoir on the border of Arkansas and Missouri. While the lake is huge and offers a lot of different water clarities, as well as different types of fishing, on this trip, I'm gonna be focusing on the dam section of Table Rock Lake. The water in this section is crystal clear with seven to 12 foot of water visibility. It's also very deep and has a variety of structure and cover. This time of year in November, a lot of the fish will actually be deeper in this section of the lake than any other section. And it's common to find fish suspended in 50 to 90 feet of water. There's actually a recent Toyota Series event that Cody Huff won fishing deep trees in the middle of pockets in 60 to 90 feet of water, and the bass were suspended in anywhere from 30 to 70 feet, super deep. This means I'm going to have to repair some unique baits to tackle these super deep suspended bass. And I have a variety of baits that I'm going to try to replicate the winning techniques from that Toyota Series event. Now my goal is to catch those deep suspended fish in that 40 to 70 foot range but I don't just want to have two or three rods rigged up for that. I also want to have some backup baits and backup strategies that I can use in case those fish aren't suspended out there very deep like they were a few weeks ago. So for today, I'm going to set up four primary rods that are gonna be focused on targeting those suspended deep fish. Then I'm gonna rig up a couple more rods as backup baits in case that pattern doesn't work out. And I'll explain why I'm using those baits and the patterns I'm gonna try. And I'm also going to throw in one bait that's going to be an experimentation bait, one I don't throw very often, but I want to learn about. And then Hopefully, after I rig up all these baits, I should have all the tools necessary to catch them on table rock. Assuming I can find those fish suspended over deep water, my go-to bait in that situation is a one ounce jigging spoon. This is the Jewel Scuba Spoon. It's literally just a hunk of lead that has a chrome finish and a treble hook on it. Not the most sexy bait on the market, but it's one of the most effective when fish are targeting schools of shad in the middle of guts and ditches and creeks in super deep water. Another reason why this bait is so effective is because I'm gonna be using my electronics, like my Garmin Live Scope and my 2D sonar on my Hummingbird Helix unit to locate the fish before I ever cast to them. This is called video game fishing or vertical fishing. Now, a lot of guys like to vertical fish with baits like a drop shot, but a drop shot isn't that efficient when you're fishing in 40 to 60 feet of water because those fish are only going to stay on your electronics and in view for maybe five to 10 seconds. Therefore, you need a bait that will get down to those fish very, very quickly, and that one ounce jigging spoon does the job. It's literally just a hunk of lead and it will fall super fast down those fish and if I see one on the screen I know I'll get that bait down to them very quickly. This is the main reason I don't throw a drop shot this time of year very much but if I did start finding some fish suspended a little bit shallower maybe the drop shot would be a good option. Now before I tie in this jigging spoon, there's one key modification you need to make, and that's to add a split ring and a barrel swivel to the nose of that spoon. This is a crucial modification because a jigging spoon has a very erratic side to side fall, and it will twist your lineup like crazy. Therefore, by adding that barrel swivel connected to a split ring connected to the nose of that spoon, you're going to reduce 95% of your line twist. And it might not seem like that big of a deal, but after if you work that spoon for two or three hours throughout the day, your line will get so twisted up that it'll be kinked up in your reel, it'll get kinked up around the tip of your rod, and it'll get really annoying. Therefore, that modification of adding the split ring and the barrel swivel is crucial to getting the best action out of the spoon. Now, another thing that guys will sometimes do is upgrade the stock treble hooks on their baits or add extra treble hooks. I find this Jewel Scuba Spoon has a really nice stock uh, short chain treble, so I just stick with it. It's really sticky out of the package. That's why I really like this spoon over any other spoon on the market. And so I will stick with the stock treble. I don't add any extra singer hooks on here as well because I don't wanna snag any fish. That's something that can be kind of common. I don't wanna hook fish on the side, stuff like that. That's not my style. So I'll stick with the standard hook and 
I just add that barrel swivel and the split ring. And I'm just going to tie that on to my jigging spoon rod. Now, I currently have a lighter jigging spoon on here. This is just a Cotton Cordell CC spoon, half ounce. And I'm switching up to that heavier spoon again because I'm fishing in very deep water. Now, if I was fishing a lot in that 15 to 25 foot range, that little half ounce CC spoon, jigging spoon is awesome. And as you can see, I do the same modifications. I had the split ring and the barrel swivel. And I actually upgrade the stock treble hook on that CC spoon because it's a super uh, cheap hook. And I'll just put a size two, or no, size four Gamakatsu EWG on there. And for my equipment, all I'm doing is throwing this on a seven foot medium action Quantum Smoke S3 rod with a Abu Garcia Black Max real $39 and then 12 pound fluorocarbon line. I like that fluorocarbon because it doesn't have a ton of stretch to it, which is good when you're jigging that spoon. And then I really like to throw 12 pound test because it helps that bait get down there faster. If you're going with really heavy line on that jigging spoon, that bait won't fall down very quickly and you're not gonna get it down to those fish. And again, the key with this one ounce spoon is to make that thing fall fast down to the bottom, get to those fish quickly and get in front of them before they disappear on your graph. So as you can tie this on the Palomar knot, there we go. And I like that seven foot medium action rod because you're basically just gonna be fishing this bait straight up and down. So there's no need for a long rod. And also that medium action has a little more tip. And because I'm throwing a treble hook bait, the medium action rod is going to have a little bit more bend to it. You don't need like a glass rod or anything, but just something with a little more tip. It's always helpful in case those fish try to throw your bait. And so I'm just going to hook this rod up and we are good to go. That is my number one option for Table Rock Lake, that jewel one ounce scuba spoon. Let's go to the next rod. The next bait I'm gonna tie on is a blade bait, specifically the Ledge Hog four inch blade bait. It's three quarter ounce and it is a fish catching machine. Blade baits are another great shad imitator and again, it's just a big hunk of metal. Seems like in the fall, I like to throw these really heavy lead baits with either a chrome or like a lime finish, something like this. And the reason for that is because these fish that I'm gonna be targeting are keying on bait fish. I'm not going to make a cast basically until I see schools of shad on my graph and then fish underneath them, either on the live scope or on my 2D sonar on my helix unit. Therefore, I need a bait that's going to imitate those shad and that three quarter ounce blade bait is another great option. Now, unlike the jigging spoon, which is a bait that I primarily fish vertically, just straight underneath the boat, the blade bait is a bait I'll actually cast out, let sink down to the desired depth, and then jig it back to the boat. A lot of times these fish can get spooky to the boat, especially if you, they get the shadow of that boat over the top of them. And so if you find that the fish are getting spooky or boat shy when you're vertically fishing with them or for them with that uh, one ounce jigging spoon, you can go to the blade bait, back off the area where you see those fish in front of you, cast that blade bait out there, let sink down to the 40 to 60 foot range, and then jig it up and down nice and slow. And I'll show you some retrieves and some fish catches from last winter when I was catching them on this exact bait. This is, again, just another tool in the arsenal. I wouldn't say that this is my go-to. I would definitely still say that that jigging spoon is well throw the majority of the time. But if the situation calls for it, this blade bait can definitely put a lot of extra fish in the boat. Now, just like the jigging spoon, I'm not just going to take this bait out of the package and start fishing it. There are some key modifications you need to make to put more fish in the boat. So here's an example of a fully modified ledge hog blade bait. And I love these modifications. They really help me catch a lot more fish, I feel like, especially in that deep, clear water. The most obvious modification is that I take off the back treble hook and put on a number three Hildebrand willow leaf blade in chrome. It's a pretty big spinnerbait blade, and because this bait is a little bit bigger, that four inch size, you can get away with that bigger blade. If you're going to like a half ounce blade bait, you would need maybe a number two blade size, and I do have some of those as well, but that number three blade works perfect on that four inch ledge hog. And then next thing I'll do is upgrade the stock treble hook. It comes with a kind of small, looks like a number four extra wide gap hook, and I changed that out for number two Gamakatsu short shank treble hooks. These are the one X strong and the two X short shank. The reason I like that short shank 
heavier hook is because I'm gonna be throwing this bait on a bait caster. And the heavier hook, the shorter shank, will help those fish keep that bait in their mouth and you won't throw, they won't throw the baits easily, especially on bait casting equipment. It's hard to throw a three quarter ounce blade bait on a spinning rod and therefore you need to upgrade those hooks to a bigger size as well as a little bit stronger hook as well. And the advantage of putting this blade on the back is that because you're putting a bigger hook on there, you don't have to worry about that hook getting tangled with the back hook. This is really key because if you put two size two trebles on this bait, they get tangled up and it would mess up this bait constantly. Therefore, changing out that back blade or the back hook with a blade and changing out the front treble hook for a bigger one is going to not only put more fish in the boat for you, but it's also going to get you more bites because you have the extra flash of the blade that will trigger a few more strikes. Now the last modification is the most important with this bait and the most overlooked. And what it is is actually changing the snap position on the top of this bait. You can see this bait actually has five different holes drilled in the top of it. And you might wonder what those are for. Well, basically the hole closest to the nose of the bait, closest to the eyes, that's the position you need to put the snap in when you want to fish this bait deep. It will get that bait diving down deeper, keep it down the strike zone longer. And when I'm fishing in 40 to 60 foot of water, you need to put that clip on the very, very first hole closest to the nose, otherwise that bait's going to rise up too high when you start reeling it and it's not going to stay down in the depth zone. The holes also at the nose are going to give that bait a tighter wobble, which is very good when you're fishing in colder water like I'll be facing. Now if you go all the way to the furthest back hole, the one closest to the tail of the bait, that'll actually cause that bait to rise really fast and you can almost wake it on the surface and it's a pretty cool technique that I'll talk about other times of the year, but since I'm fishing super deep today, not going to worry about it. But those are the modifications I make with this ledge hog blade bait. And what I'll do is put this on a seven foot two medium heavy action quantum smoke S3 rod with just another Abu Garcia Black Max. And I'm throwing 12 pound test on this as well. Again, the 12 pound test fluorocarbon, really important because it's going to help keep that bait deep. And if you're throwing this on 15 or 17 pound test, it'll just make that bait sink slower. I would throw it on like 10 if I could, but because it's a three quarter ounce bait, I'm not going to mess with that because that's going to get hung up. And I'm also not going to throw this bait around a ton of standing timber just because it has a giant treble hook on it, just like that jigging spoon. So I'm not as inclined to throw that thing around standing timber. So I'm just going to tie this on real quick with a Palomar knot and we're going to be in business. It's harder to tie on baits while talking than you would expect. I've tied probably 10,000 Palomar knots in my life and yet it's very difficult when you're talking to the camera. So there we go. Got that thing tied on there. It is fully customized and that is my second bait that I'm going to be throwing on Table Rock. The next bait I'm going to tie on is pretty unique and it's just another lead bait with some hooks attached to it. This is the Rapala Jigging Wrap. It's an ice fishing jig, but it's a very heavy one. It's a 5 8 ounce Rapala Jigging Wrap. And you might be wondering why I'm fishing an ice fishing jig when there's no ice on the water. I'm going out in my boat. And for whatever reason, these fish on Table Rock that are suspended vertically, especially over very deep water, love this ice fishing jig. I don't know who discovered it, but it's something that's a big deal in my area of the country and something you might have not seen before or at least heard about guys throwing. The one thing that's really nice about this jigging wrap is that it has a lot of different hook points on it so that these fish, even if they swipe at it, they're going to potentially get a hook in them. And it's kind of a weird bait. I'll show you guys when I get to like how I fish it. It's just kind of literally just like jigging an ice fishing jig up and down. You may have never done that. I grew up in Wisconsin, so it's kind of second nature to use baits like this, but I'm just fishing it vertically just like I would my jigging spoon but for some reason those fish sometimes get conditioned to that one ounce jigging spoon and you can drop down the ice fishing jig and catch better fish and more numbers. This is actually the bait that Cody Huff used to win that Toyota series event that was a couple weeks ago on Table Rock. Now for the equipment I use with this bait, I go to a spinning rod and it's actually the rod I use for my Neko rig. And it's just a seven foot four medium action quantum smoke S3 rod. And I really like these quantum smoke S3 rods. I'm not sponsored by quantum, but you can see I have a lot of them on deck of the boat. They're 150 bucks. They have a really good uh, sensitive tip. I like the feel of them. They're really well built with the guides and everything. No micro guides. So really like these rods, not the most popular rod in the market, 
but it's the one I use. Now I'm putting a, uh, a Quantum Smoke 300 size reel, and I have 20 pound uh, braided line for my main line and an eight pound fluorocarbon leader connected with a, an FG knot. And the reason I like that seven foot four medium action rod is that it has a lot of nice bend to it and it also handles that five eight ounce jigging wrap really well. If you go to a lighter rod with that five eight ounce jig, it's going to bend too much and you're going to lose some fish on the hook set. So you need to be able to penetrate the hooks in those fish's mouth so a seven foot meat, seven foot four medium action rod is the best rod for this Rapala jigging rod. Now I'm just gonna tie this on with Palomar knot. And I don't actually make any modifications to this bait because it's kind of a wonky bait. It doesn't really have like a standard split ring to it. And I've tried adding split rings before and they actually just come off while I'm fishing. So I just keep the hooks standard and if the hooks become dull, I just get a brand new jigging wrap. So it's kind of one of those baits that I don't modify at all. I just tie straight on and it's a really, really effective bait, kind of a weird bait, but one that will definitely put some fish in the boat in the right situation. So that's my number three option. Really quick, I want to let you guys know about an awesome sale that's going on over at TackleWarehouse.com. For Black Friday, they're having a 20% off pretty much everything on the website. So whenever you add something to the cart, it'll automatically take 20% off that item. I've already bought like $500 worth of fishing line and some new rods that were on sale to review for you guys. And this is the time of year I always stock up on stuff like fishing line for the next year. And if you are going to shop on Tackle Warehouse, I really appreciate if you head over to fishthemoment.com and then head over to the support fish the moment tab. Here you'll find a Tackle Warehouse link. And if you click this link, you'll see a little tag here, question mark from equals fish the moment. If you click that link, Anything you purchase from this point on on Tackle Warehouse will give a small percentage of the profits to Fish the Moment. It's a great way to support the channel without having to do any sort of donation. Just buy Fish and Tackle and we get a small percentage of your sale. And if you want to make sure that you always use this link when you check out at Tackle Warehouse, just bookmark the link. That's what I did here. That way you'll be helping us out on all of your future Tackle Warehouse purchases as well. Again, if you like the content, this is a great way to support the channel and we really appreciate the support. My fourth go-to option option is going to be an Alabama rig. Whenever fish are suspended in the fall, the Alabama rig is my go-to bait. It's really hard to beat. And a lot of times when these fish are really keyed on shad, it's hard to get them to bite a single lure, like the jigging wrap or a jigging spoon or that blade bait. And there's just certain days where the Alabama rig will outfish those baits five to one. I usually don't start with the Alabama rig just because, I don't know, I just like throwing the other baits better. But if I had to just pick one bait to go out on table rock with and throw out deep, it would be the Alabama rig. You're gonna get more bites with it than anything else. Now on Table Rock, we have the unique restriction that you can only put three hooks on this bait. And I've actually made a video explaining my entire Alabama rig setup. I actually redid my Alabama, Alabama rig box on camera with you guys and showed you all the different setups. And I'm actually using my Table Rock special deep water Alabama rig that I talked about in that video. I'm not going to get into it in this video because I've already gone through all my setup and stuff like that. So if you want to see how I set up this Alabama rig with the teaser hooks and all that stuff, as well as my equipment, check out that video linked here and you'll be able to see everything I use here. That's it for the top four baits I plan to throw on Table Rock. Now again, my game plan is to target those fish suspended in 40 to 60 feet of water very deep. And all of those baits are designed to target those fish. But as you know, fishing is not always that simple and game plans don't always work out. Therefore, I need to have some backup baits just in case I can't find those fish out deep suspended in the middle of the guts and on shad. One scenario I might face is that the fish are actually moving shallower as the water temperatures drop. This means they might be positioning on point points and drop offs in 15 to 30 feet of water. This is the perfect zone to fish my Fish the Moment Offshore Jig by Jewel Baits. This is the bait I designed for Jewel and it's an awesome bait for fishing in deep water, whether it's clear water, stained water, whatever it is. And if those fish are in anywhere from eight to 30 feet of water, you can guarantee that you can get bit on this bait. Out of the package, the Fish the Moment Offshore Jig comes with a very long flop top skirt. The reason 
reason we did this is because we want to give you the option to customize this bait based on the situation. I love fishing this very long, big, bulky skirt when I have dirty water and I'm fishing for really big fish. It will draw some extra bites and it will call the attention of fish in that dirty water. However, when you're fishing in very clear water, I'm actually going to go to a very natural, subtle color like this watermelon candy. And I'm also going to trim that jig up significantly. I'll take the bottom of the skirt there and trim it to just a quarter inch from the base of the hook. And I'm also going to trim the top of the skirt near the head to more of a finesse jig profile. This will take a lot of material out of the skirt and it will make it a lot easier for spotted bass and smallmouth to eat this bait. On Table Rock I fish for a lot of spotted bass and smallmouth and also because that water is so clear those fish are a little bit spookier to that big bulky profile so by making that profile smaller it imitates a crawfish a lot better and you're going to get a lot more bites in that clear water with that natural watermelon candy color and that trimmed up skirt. Now I'm going to pair this jig with a Strike King Menace Grub trailer. This is my go-to trailer when I'm fishing in deep clear water, especially in the winter time when that water temperature is below 75 degrees. And all I'm gonna do is basically take three or four ribs off the top of that Menace Grub and I'm going to thread it onto the jig. And basically, this is my go-to jig setup throughout the entire winter whenever I'm fishing on these deep clear lakes. This exact trim on the skirt with that Strike King Menace Grub trailer, green pumpkin. I always use a green pumpkin trailer on that watermelon jig. I don't usually go watermelon, watermelon. I don't know why, just what I do. And when I'm fishing my football jig in this deep clear water, I like to throw a seven foot six heavy action quantum smoke S3 rod with 15 pound Seaguar and Vizex fluorocarbon. A lot of times in the summer on dirtier, shallower lakes, I like to fish my jig on seven 17 pound fluorocarbon on a seven foot four heavy action rod. But I find that when I'm fishing in deeper clear water, going to a little bit longer rod will allow you to pick up a little more line, especially when that bait's down there in that 25 to 30 foot range. And that 15 pound test will let that bait sink down deeper a little bit better. And so you won't really usually sacrifice that much in terms of breaking strength. But if you throw 17 pound tests, that bait will just sink forever and it'll take way too long for that bait to hit the bottom so just tie this on with the palomar knot trim off the tag end and we're going to be good to go so um, that is my football jig setup where my scissors go here we go that's my football jig setup here and this is going to be my go-to bait if i notice those fish are in that 10 to 30 foot range especially positioned near the bottom the other backup bait I'm going to have tied on is the three inch mega bass spark shad on a quarter ounce ball head jig head. This is an awesome bait when the fish are suspended in that 15 to 30 foot range. It's a little bit hard to fish that quarter ounce swim bait in deeper than 30 feet of water. And that's why I go to the jigging spoons and those hard lead baits when those fish get in that 40 to 70 foot range. But when they're in that 10 to 30 foot range, it is hard to beat a quarter ounce jig head and a three inch mega bass spark shad. Just just fish for those suspended fish. A lot of those fish will be suspended down in anywhere from, again, maybe that five to 25 foot range over deeper water. And you can just reel this bait straight through them and catch a ton of fish. I've actually gone through all of my swim baits that I use as well as where I fish them, what fish look like on the fish finder, and how to dial in your swim bait fishing offshore to catch a lot of fish. Check out that video here if you haven't seen it. And for my setup on this bait, I'm gonna be using a seven foot to medium light action quantum smoke S3 rod with a super old quantum energy spinning reel 20 size with 10 pound braided line for the main line connected to a six pound fluorocarbon leader. And I'll link all of these baits again in the description of this video. You can check them out. And if you use the link that I put in the description to Tackle Warehouse, I actually get a small percentage of all the profits from those sales. And so if you enjoy the content and want me to continue to make videos like this and support the channel, definitely use that link you can even bookmark it and it would really help me out so that's my next backup bait and finally I want to talk about the experimental bait that I'm going to try that I don't know if it'll work but if it does it'll be pretty cool
Here's the bait I'm going to be experimenting with on this fishing trip. It's the Mega Bass Vision 110 Plus 2. It's the super deep diving jerk bait in the Mega Bass lineup. And I don't throw a lot of jerk baits in general, and I've never thrown these super deep divers before. They'll get down in the 12 to 17 foot range, at least that's what the package says. And I really feel like I could utilize these baits to catch a lot of good suspended fish, especially if they're in that 15 to 30 foot of water range. I'm expecting to target the same fish I would use the swim bait for, but maybe giving them a little bit more erratic action with a jerk bait could trigger some extra bites, especially in the winter time. Now, I don't know what color to throw here. I have two different colors. I'm thinking about going with the little bit more matte finish sides. I'll put the color of this bait on the screen. I don't even know the color. And I'm going to throw this. It looks pretty good in the light here. And I feel like in that deeper water, having a matte finish might be helpful. But I might go to this more translucent finish if I find that the fish are swiping at the bait. And for the setup on this, I'm going to be switching out to this Mega Bass Vision 110 standard with that Vig Vision 110 Plus 2 on a seven foot two medium moderate Jenko Fishing Gambler spinning rod. This is actually my crankbait spinning rod and it's an awesome rod for fishing little wood balsa baits. I got one right here. These little like wood balsa style baits. They are really tough to throw. They kind of cast like a potato chip, but you can throw them on this spinning rod and get a lot more distance out of them and it has a very very bendy tip it's literally like a kind of like a crankbait rod like a composite crankbait rod but in a spinning rod form it's one of the few i found in the market that is really good it's that gambler jenko fishing medium moderate seven foot two now i'm pairing it up with a 50 dollar shimano nexave spinning rod spinning reel it's a 2500 HG series. I don't know, I found the academy. I wasn't gonna spend a lot of money on new spinning reels. So I wanted to test this one out. It worked out pretty well for me. And I'm just putting straight fluorocarbon on the spinning reel. I hate fishing straight fluorocarbon and I try to, do, to avoid it when I can. But the reason I'm doing that is because with these treble hook baits, if you throw braided line to a fluorocarbon leader, you will pull these hooks out of the fish's mouth when they surge and you'll lose so many fish. So I'll put up with the line twist and all of the memory and the nastiness to keep the fish on. And usually with these crank baits and jerk baits, you're gonna be working them fast enough that you're not going to have a ton of slack in your line and you won't have as much line twist. And so I'm just going with straight six pound fluorocarbon. And I'm hoping that with the six pound fluorocarbon, as well as the 7-2 spinning rod, I should be able to get this bait pretty deep. And what I've read about this bait, and these long like spoonbill plugs in the past spoonbill jerk baits is that you're not necessarily fishing them like a jerk bait. You're actually just reeling them down to the depth and then pulling them. And you're kind of doing like a pull retrieve. Let me get this thing tied on because I'm gonna have trouble with my palmer knots again while talking. There we go. But anyways, the way I'm gonna be fishing this bait is by pulling it through the water column. And I'm hoping that with the lighter line and the longer spinning rod, I can get it down to that 15 to 20 foot range. Just kind of pull it through the strike zone once it gets down there. And again, I don't know if this bait's going to work. I also don't know if I'm even going to find fish position in a way where I can catch them on this bait. That's one thing that you never know before you head to the lake is how the fish are gonna be positioned and how you might need to adapt when you get to the lake. And that's why I always like to rig up several different rods. I have this experimental rod here. I have my two backup rods here. And then I have my four go-to rods for a total of seven rods. That's a good number for me when I go to the lake. I don't like to have many more than that, maybe eight at the max. And the reason for that is I don't wanna spread myself too thin with my techniques. Most of the time when you go to the lake, you have six to eight hours to figure out the fish. And if you haven't been to the lake in a long time, like I'm doing on Table Rock, I haven't been there in three or four months, the fish are going to be doing something completely different from the last time you were there. And you're going to have to dial in a new pattern on that day. And you're going to do yourself a disservice if you have 15 rods in the deck of the boat. If you notice, I don't have any crankbait rods for shallow water fishing or shallow spinner bait, a jig, anything for fishing basically less than 15 feet of water. And that's by design. I'm going with the intention of catching some deeper fish and I'm going to spend my entire 
entire day searching for that pattern. Hopefully I find some fish doing that and that's my strength so I think I should be able to do it but if I had a crankbait rod out or a shallow swim bait rod, you're gonna get tempted into throwing those baits throughout the day and you're going to get distracted from your primary pattern. So as you'll see going forward in a lot of these tackle prep videos and rod setup videos, I'm going to be basically focusing on one style of fishing and giving myself multiple options within that style. Some days I might fish shallow, some days I might fish deep. But at the end of the day, I'm going to just bring my three or four primary rods, three or four backup rods, one experimental rod, and then live or die by those techniques. And that usually generates the best success for me. So hopefully this video is helpful for you guys. Hopefully walking through all the different modifications, different baits will give you guys some new ideas on what to throw this fall. And I will be doing a lot more of these videos if you guys like them. So the best way you can let me know if you enjoyed this video is to leave a like down on the video. If we can get this video to 2000 likes, I'll know that you guys love the series. If it gets to a thousand likes, I'll know you guys still like it a lot and I'll definitely be able to continue making these videos. And just make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to follow more Fish the Moment content and actually follow my day when I go out to Table Rock and experiment with all these rods. So again, thanks for checking out the video and I'll see you all next one.